hello there and this time it's a time for a game review and today I'm going to review uh, Shenmue 3 uh, the PS4 version on my PS4 Pro um, back in the Dreamcast days um, I really didn't know pretty much anything about the Shenmue game, Shenmue 1 and 2 on uh, on Dreamcast. But later I heard that they were quite of system selling games for the Dreamcast. And uh, I was just recently more uh, started to uh, be interested about those games, the Shenmue games. And I also knew that there was a third game uh, finally available after like 18 years. <laughs> uh, so the, I think the uh, first two Shenmue games were released in 2000 and 2001 for Dreamcast. But yeah, back in the day I, I didn't have a Dreamcast, so I didn't. Uh, I was not able to buy them, uh, but they are now available also as a bundle, uh, Shenmue 1 and 2 on uh, PS4 and Xbox One, uh, not on Switch, but uh, yeah, or Xbox One and PS4, but uh, and I knew that they were very story-heavy, story-focused games. Uh, but I decided to not buy, the, buy those first two games for my PS4 because I was already running quite low on uh, storage space on my Pro. <laughs> so, and also they were quite as quite expensive, the bundle was quite expensive, so I decided to, I will definitely want to see what's, uh, what they are all about. So I watched the whole walkthrough, not let's play, uh, just a no commentary walkthrough, I didn't really want to any, you know, the player itself uh, ruin the uh, just talk. <laughs> and ruin the atmosphere. So I watched the no commentary walkthroughs of the first two games and I really got hooked into the story of the of those games and uh, also I had to watch those to really understand what's going on story-wise on Shenmue 3 because it peaks off right after uh, where the Shenmue 2 ends. So it picks up right after that it uh, immediately continues uh, uh, after the events of the Shenmue 2. And also Shenmue 2 is a straight continuation of Shenmue 1. So in a nutshell uh, let's go back before this uh, actual review of the third game. I'm not going to, <laughs> of course, I'm not going to uh, review the first two games, but uh, let's just go back to the, you know, story a little bit of what happened in the first two games. So you play as this young Ryu Hazuki, uh, a young man who is interested in martial arts and uh, in the very beginning of the first game uh, he sees he, his father get killed by this bad man Lan Di who is a really uh, skilled uh, martial arts fighter and also some kind of, I don't know, uh, boss of some <laughs> evil organization or something. Or just badass <laughs> uh, evil character. But um, so, and then 
before his father does it, his father says something to uh, to Ryu that uh, he has to avenge his death and just follow the landy and uh, and it has to do something with the mirrors uh, the phoenix mirror and and uh, long story short you begin the first game in Japan and you uh, from there you uh, head to the Hong Kong and so you go from Japan to China to Hong Kong and uh, the search just continues uh, uh, for the landy and uh, you'll do these multiple quests and you meet various many various interesting characters along the way and yeah very interesting story and where the uh, Shenmue 2 the ending of the game you travel to the village Bailu village and you meet this uh, young girl named Shenhua and you save her uh, in the end of the Shenmue 2 and then she tells Ryu that uh, her father is missing and it has to do something with those mirrors so they discover the cave uh, that they uh, that uh, Shen Shenhua uh, says to Ryu that uh, the cave is where she saw her father uh, last time and uh, and her father is missing uh, uh, he is nowhere to be seen in the cave and then they uh, go back to the Bailu village to Shenhua's house and that is pretty much where the Shenmue 2 ends and where the Shenmue 3 starts so uh, in Shenmue 3 the, the story starts uh, from that point that they uh, continue to search for her father what happened to uh, to him and uh, you start the game in the Bailu village uh, and now we are already in the Shenmue 3 game so uh, it's an interesting little village uh, uh, where you meet these uh, interesting many many interesting characters and uh, you do quests, uh, they want this and that for you to do and help, help them and uh, and you just try to progress and uh, you do these quests and uh, then you progress through the uh, story but it can be sometimes very tedious and frustrating because some quests are very frustrating and at times it feels like the story just didn't move very fast it moves very very slow uh, but then again the atmosphere of the game is just great I mean just the whole breathing world of the Bailu village uh, and the uh, whole environment is just great. There are a day and night cycle uh, where you uh, just, you know, you wake up in the morning and you just go to talk to these uh, villagers and uh, they give you questions, you complete those and uh, time moves on and uh, 
all of a sudden it's an evening and night and then you have to go back to the Shenhua's house uh, uh, to get some sleep and you know uh, wake up in the morning and repeat repeat that cycle so uh, so the, uh, yeah and there aren't the Bailu village section which is the first section of the game uh, there are pretty much two big sections of the Shenmue 3 and uh, yeah the Bailu village is the first and it's pretty much more like exploration and just uh, doing this quest and it has very little uh, combat because all of course the combat is a big part of the Shenmue games also so this uh, martial arts combat uh, and you can improve your martial martial arts skills by obtaining skill books and then sparring or fighting with the monks and just increasing your uh, that way increasing your uh, martial, martial arts fighting skills and also very important part of the game is an uh, endurance which also is a HP pretty much in a fights so you have to eat and you have to drink to uh, replenish your uh, stamina and HP because if you go to the fights and you pretty much uh, don't know when those fights will occur they will suddenly just bad guys uh, will uh, will just uh, bump you and you have to fight them but uh, that's not really the part of the Bailu village. It's more more uh, the second part of the game, Niawu uh, port city, that uh, where that part focuses more on the combat. So, but yeah, uh, you can in those martial arts halls you can spar or. Yeah, fight those monks and increase your skills uh, but you have to really take care of your uh, eating and drinking before you go to those fights because uh, it also means if you are very low on endurance you are very low on HP also and you get your ass kicked very <laughs> easily uh, if you don't eat and drink uh, before the fights so and also uh, the more HP and endurance you have the more faster in faster rate you uh, also uh, improve your skills so yeah you have to pretty much uh, there are many many market places in the uh, both of the uh, big areas of the game, so Bailu village and Niawu port city. Uh, so you buy food and you know eat uh, uh, food and drink stuff from there and also many many other like like just jewels or whatever toys <laughs> you can pretty much buy anything and then there are uh, also the a gambling part of the game is a also a very that is a very big part of the Shenmue game. So you go to these uh, go to this gambling. Uh, there are uh, people that you can play these little games and you can bet your money and just try to win more money from them so it's uh, there are 
pretty nice little game. So there's some games are not so interesting like Turtle Race or something, but you know, uh, dice throwing and uh, and just yeah, there are many kinds of mini games, and the gambling side of the game is uh, quite interesting, and also it's the way to get richer much faster. So you also need money for some of the quests of the game that uh, requires you to buy this and that item and some of the items can be really expensive so you have to really really uh, uh, have a good amount of money and also there are a couple of jobs you can do to earn some more money so uh, wood chopping <laughs> uh, that was my favorite and uh, you can do wood chopping in both Bailu village and the Aubu city uh, but in Niago city you can also do this forklift uh, you know bring that item to from point A to point B with forklift so the forklift part uh, was also uh, uh, the thing in the Shenmue 1 and 2 games I, I think at least in a Shenmue 2. I, I'm not really sure if that was a thing in Shenmue 1, but yeah, there were forklifts and you can do these uh, little uh, uh, jobs to earn some money. So yeah, that's also in the Shenmue 3. And um, of course, I'm not going to stop from the story point. I'm not going to give you a story spoilers, but yeah, they they're pretty much, uh, you know, it's quite simple. They just, uh, the whole Shenmue 3 game, they are just searching for uh, Shenhua's father who has gone missing. And yeah, just, and it has to do with those mirrors and the bad guys wanting those mirrors that the Ryu uh, has. So, um, so yeah, the story can be quite simple, but I just love how detailed, uh, you know, how there are so, so much that happens story-wise in those games. Uh, and of course now particularly uh, talking about Shenmue 3 and yeah, but the fighting, like I said, the fighting is a, is in very little focus on the uh, Bailu village. But once you get to the uh, to the Niagu port city, uh, there it focuses more on fights, and you really have to, you know, you have to improve your uh, fighting skills, and you really need to obtain those skill books in order to uh, in order to increase your attack power uh, and your endurance and HP uh, and also your uh, martial arts kung fu level so your fighting level because uh, I play it on easiest mode the story mode it was called so uh, I just thought that I would really want to just focus on the story and not get you know stuck in uh, difficult situations you know the fighting so there were a couple even on uh, easy mode there were a couple of uh, couple of quite hard uh, fights in the game but uh, but yeah uh, the most important 
thing is that you remember to eat and drink before the fights if it's possible and also increase your skills then you have no problem with uh, with the fights but if you don't really increase your fighting skills and your endurance you are in for a rough ride uh, with those fights so you really have to it the game kind of requires you to spar with the uh, monks in the martial arts hall to increase your uh, skills and endurance. Uh, so, yeah, and also, I think Shenmue 1 and 2 were one of those first games that introduced a quick time event. Thing that uh, many loves but also as many hates them <laughs> and I'm somewhere in between of that so of course there are quite many quick time events also in Shenmue 3 um, but they are not hard you know and they are always the same you know buttons you have to press they, they will not change so you can just memorize them pretty much and if you fail you can just start immediately from the uh, quick time event scene so you don't have to you know you 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 don't die <laughs> and then you just have to go back in the game and uh, the way where you last time saved. No, you can immediately uh, try again from the quick time event scene, uh, from the start of the scene. Um, but yeah, they are quite stylish. Some some are like chase scene, chase scenes where you have to chase some uh, bad guys, and it's a they are really nicely directed. Uh, I really like those chase scenes. Uh, so, yeah, I don't, I don't pretty much hate quick time events, and they were done quite effectively on Shenmue Three. Um, so what else? Yeah, the sounds are very good. Uh, the soundscape is very, very well done and it just uh, makes you feel that you really are in the world of Shenmue. They are like, yeah, the audio is very well done and uh, all the environment noises and ambient noises, they are great. And also the graphics are, at times they are very gorgeous and the game is done by Unreal Engine 4. No surprise, <laughs> as so many other games are done with that game engine. And it really shines on uh, some places. The game looks absolutely gorgeous and uh, on the Technical side of things, yeah, uh, on Pro, it runs on 1080p with about, not 60, but about 50 frames per second average. But if you are on the base PS4, it's uh, lower resolution with lower frame rate. I think it was like 40 frames per second. So. Definite, of course, like you expect, it performs better on Pro, but I can't really compare. But yeah, it performed quite nicely. There was there there was definitely some frame rate hiccups there and now and there, uh, here and there, um, but nothing really serious. So. Uh, yeah, graphically the game is, I would say, somewhat above average, but not like 
the greatest looking game. But like I said, some scenes were really looking great, and especially on night times and evenings when, uh, you know, especially in the Niavu port city, all the, you know, there are there is some sheep that the neon lights that just flash and they look really gorgeous on and reflect on the water and uh, yeah it, it can be a really at times at best it can be a really colorful game and i really like that so yeah not sure if i now forgot to mention some of the important parts of the game but yeah i really love the game i i know that this game was uh well first of all many fans didn't even think that this will ever get released and yeah the you know fans were just really frustrated because the Shenmue 2 back in 2001, it just ends at saying the story continues and people waited and waited almost 20 years uh, and finally the story uh, got its uh, continuation in the form of uh, Shenmue 3 and also where this Shenmue 3 ends it also says the story continues so definitely the uh, Suzuki who's the creator and director of the Yu Suzuki uh, of the game really plans on continuing this so it's not just a trilogy it will continue in uh, Shenmue 4 and yeah you can tell of the ending of uh, of Shenmue 3 that uh, they still uh, continue the quest and they are not finished with the uh, grand quest uh, so uh, not telling anything about of course of the end of the uh, Shenmue 3 but it really picks up uh, you know the story really picks up at the end of Shenmue 3 and the ending was definitely the best part of it. Uh, but not going to spoil uh, any more about that. But yeah, I would give this game a um, very solid, I would say, 8 out of 10. Because it, it would have get a better rating if if it wasn't for the tedious some tedious and frustrating quests uh, that just felt like the story was just stuck at times and didn't really you know pick up but yeah the end really pick, the end of end of the Shenmue 3 really starts to pick up story wise and yeah I mean the ending saved a lot so uh, without the great ending of Shenmue 3 I would give this game maybe a 7 out of 10 but yeah thanks to the ending uh, part of the game I give this 8 out of 10 so yeah um, about half an hour review I thought this would even be longer but I'm quite satisfied <laughs> this got uh, under 30 minutes so yeah next time see you in the next video whatever I decide to do but yeah this was definitely a game I wanted to review because it really surprised me uh, Shenmue 3 wasn't great game in my opinion so it's a buy